okay love like um like i said before we don't want this to get into doom and gloom but this final bit about the dog racing um as its terminal diagnosis been a little bit premature you i mean look i think dog racing will still be going a lot of people said about a few years ago about being at eight or ten super tracks when there was probably about 25 about you know, a lot of clothes since then. I think we're down to 17 now. I mean, Milton Hall's just reopened all Suffolk Downs, as it's now called, and Oxford, which is literally 10 minutes up the road from me, you know, should be opening as well later on this year sometime. That's 2022. Now, yeah, I mean, will there be eight or 10 tracks still left in another five or 10 years' time? I don't know. I think that might well be the case. I think it will be the case when there'll be a lot of betting shop racing, a lot of betting shop owned tracks. I think the open racing will still sort of survive sometimes in the evening and hopefully the derby will still be about and if Star was still sponsoring it, it'll be great then and I like the thing that Toast just did about again in another five or ten years time still going and still flying the flag with, with the open racing but yeah ground racing in this country it's it's on a downward circle whether it'll still be in existence in you know 30 40 years time maybe in my you know after I've gone I'm not entirely sure but all the sats and the terminal decline at the moment it's probably, it's not very well, I'll put it that way. Okay, now moving on to more <clears throat> cheerful stuff. You um, you work for Star Sports now, as we all know. Uh, so you help your, your boss, Benny the dog, <laughs> with the skills required to become your boss. Tell us a bit about that. Yeah, look, I mean, listen, Ben's, you know, been certainly cavalier in his time. And it's strange how I actually got to know Ben. Obviously, I lost touch with Ben for a long time. I think he was working for Victor Chandler in Gibraltar. And I was, I was on my holiday in Tenerife, like you do, you know, lads staying somewhere that cost like 200 quid and drinking at 10 o'clock in the morning. I got this phone call from an unknown Spanish number. I wasn't going to answer it. And it was Ben yakking on about he wanted to get some pictures and start betting at the race course and how it was great. And he was going to start a credit business and... I think this is his money he got left when he left VC, and um, he won it. He had a bet, didn't he? Did he? Oh, yeah, yeah. Three hundred with a fraction. Oh, he knew the fraction. See, did he read your blog before with a fraction? So oh, or not? He probably he did. I like. Of course, he would have done. Yeah, exactly. But no. So he started with these pitches, and we used to go to Sandown and Kempton for the the jump meetings, and you know we'd, we'd lay in the last on the end of the line with with Wharton Slaney, who was Barry Slaney before who he, he got involved with with Barry because he wasn't even old enough to have a license at the time, and he used to go with Barry and Barry to lay the bets, and then. When he was old enough, we used to go and you know stand at the the sort of the London tracks, the Kemptons, the, the Sandowns, just go to Newmarket. This is before boards on rails. It was getting to the stage when boards were just going to come on rails, maybe. So a lot of people were turning up because they were thinking, oh, this might be good. You know, we'll start using our rails pitches. We'd be on the end and you know getting terrible value. And I think Ben would be the first to admit now, you know, he was getting picked off left, right, and centre. But if you've got a bad rails pitch, that's how he was ever going to be picked off and probably laying over the odds everything and I'm sure Ben probably learnt that way that you know getting laid over laying over the odds wasn't the way to go forward but many a time I'll be peering into the gloom at Sandown and Kempton and I'll go with a Jenny it was a Jenny Pittman train bumper favourite usually always the way and you know what's in fun what's happening and you know invariably they'd win I will say about obviously we had the infamous thing with Sir Eric a couple of years ago in the uh, the Triumph Hurdle Ben doesn't watch a race he just literally wants to bet to figures get the horse in the book, take the money, do what he does, and then you look at the screen and to him it's just, you know, brown animals running around the field. He, he wouldn't know what was what. If I said it's all the, the Mac Tomb colours or this colours or that colours, he goes, what's that, what's that? He wouldn't know. He wouldn't watch a race and he just wants to know if he can get the favourite beat or whatever his leg beat, and that's the main thing. But, yeah, I mean, he's certainly, say, he's come on a bundle since then, I must admit, you know, he's learned, I think, to lay the right punters at the right price, which is a big thing. And obviously to lay the right people, which is a you know a big thing in this game. There's certain people you can lay, and you know for a fact, if you land, you'll go skint. Land the right people, again a big big effort you take. Obviously land people with credit because you know we all know with credit you've got to win twice. You've got to beat them, and you've got to get paid as well. So you know, and I think a lot like a lot of people, he's learned. There's a lot of knockers in this game, and people who you know will have the bet and won't pay. They're first in the rounds with their hands out to draw when they want to draw. But then, you know, when it comes to getting them to play, they go on the missing list. And I think we've all seen that before with me, ourselves down the line. I'm sure even myself have gone missing a few times, you know, with a with a, with a, with a bit of a <laughs> credit alert on a pair of ten. See you later with that one, you know. But, yeah, I have paid everybody I know. I don't think I know anybody at the moment. So. Well, that's pretty good. So somewhere along the line, <clears throat> this is not putting you, you know, not having a pop at you lot, but somewhere <clears throat> along the line, Ben's gone <clears throat> on to be this extremely successful businessman. And you're quite happy doing what you're doing. Do you sort of... Do you wish that you'd sort of been a little bit more that way and 
been sort of sat in a mansion somewhere like you? No, I'm, I'm, I, to be honest, so I'm the most laid back person in the world. So, I mean, it's a polite way of calling myself lazy, really, but I'm just happy to sit and. Ben would call me a wage slave, you know. I'm just quite happy to go and do my job and do my bits and pieces and have my little bits here and there and, and do what I do. And no, good luck to him. Look, I've enjoyed what I've done and I've enjoyed my time in the game and hopefully I've got a few more years left in it yet. And I enjoy, you know, betting. I also enjoy, and I've made a book myself a few times and, you know, there's been a few times I've gone out and I've sort of been a standing bookmaker at the dogs and, you know, put my prices up there and, and taken a few quid at Portsmouth Dogs and certainly used to enjoy doing that. and at the races as well, you know, I've repped for a few people and I've, I've enjoyed there. So again, you know, going there and putting a few quid in myself and yeah, I enjoy it, look, and I've enjoyed being, I've enjoyed seeing it both sides of the fence. So I think I've got a better understanding of the game now, certainly haven't seen it both sides of the fence. I mean, Ben keeps calling it the game. It sounds like something else you mentioned that really, but you know, everyone calls it that now. So it's just, uh, just the way it is. But no, look, I've seen it both sides of the fence and I enjoy, say, being a punter and, and being a bookmaker as well. Now, Anyone that's worked on a pitch where you around the pitch where you two are would not miss, miss that you and him can say things to each other. I mean, Ben would call anybody that works for him staff, and he says, and you say stuff to him that staff can't say to a boss normally, and he says things to you which probably would have been on the hotline to HR if he'd said it to anybody <laughs> else. Um, but it does appear to have elevated you to the higher echelons of staff. Because you're the union boss. I'm the union, yeah. So what's so, all that about? I don't know. I, just, look, ben, I think it's fair to say that Mr. Keith's a character, isn't he? I think everybody who knows Ben and people who even see him from, from a distance, you know, can tell Ben is, is a character. And um, we certainly, yeah, we have that sort of a good bit. So we say love-hate relationship. Look, I love him a bit, really. And I think Dick Danny does with me, too. We always have this laugh and a joke about being a union face and calling people like that because you know maybe sometimes i won't do this and i'll everything's got an excuse if i if he says do something it's like well no i've done this and that and ben loves that he loves the fact i always find an excuse for anything i'll do it don't get me wrong i'm one of those people it's the same i'm, I'm the same generally like eventually i'll do it i'll always make an excuse for it at some stage it's like oh yeah whatever. <laughs> and ben's just picked up on that we've always had that sort of say that love hate relationship really with with me and ben but no look we get on the stool together and we always have a, a, a good laugh and a joke. Um, you, you pretty much recently saw that, didn't you, at Ascot? Well, you were there yourself the day you come and call yourself the artist and we had a good old laugh about that, didn't we? And, but I was, I was betting in the wrong pitch, according to Ben, and he didn't stop moaning, did he, for the first sort of two hours. We're and then, in the silver ring. Well, why are you doing in the silver What are we doing here? Why are we there? I did say if you hadn't have been there, I would have bet in the silver ring, literally down the bottom. It's like, well, why, are we, why are we here? Why aren't we there? I'd admit, I might, have, I might have had one wrong pick suggestion, maybe, but I didn't think it was a bad picture he were. And at the end of the day, but he admitted himself it wasn't too bad, did he? Well, he couldn't say it, could he? Because he just couldn't bring himself to say, oh, this isn't too bad. <laughs> really. He's even arguing now, Ben. <laughs> right, so Lofty, leave poor old Ben out of it now. You're on, on, on course as much as you were 30 years ago. We all grew up on course. I mean, you know, we know times have changed. Do you miss it? Do you miss not being there? Uh, do I miss day to day on course? I don't miss the travelling, certainly. I think, you know, that was, a, I mean, I used to live in Portsmouth and go to Huntingdon and you know it was a two and a half hour drive and Newmarket and even with you know when we used to be with Ben Newmarket's not that bad for me to be honest but yeah I sometimes don't miss the travelling and the day to day stuff when I was doing it four and five days a week or, or working in the afternoon and then rushing back for the dogs in the evening so you don't miss out that's a, a long way of doing it miss the day to day camaraderie but I think there's a lot less bookmakers go now you know the, the camaraderie you would know yourself and your old days in the ring, you'd see the same characters. It was like a travelling circus, wasn't it? You'd see the same people every day, you know. I'll say it was, a, it was probably was quite a few clowns as well, really, wasn't it? At the, the race you used on to see about. Fence, I'll say yeah. I'm on both sides of the fence, yeah, you know. So, um, but look, you know, there was some, you know, and there's some real characters that I think we've missed over the years who, you know, people have gone. I mean, like, I've seen a call working for a dear bloke, Michael Mendoza, who's no longer with us, so I think we could all, we could all mention, you know, I mean, if you ever had a, if you ever had a sort of a, a tab on the computer, Mark Lovable Rogue, he'd be the first one underneath it. But, you know, he was a, a real character. And people like that maybe aren't quite about so much these days. I thought in the bookmaking, it's a bit more sterile nowadays, isn't it? A bit more head in the machine. And, you know, there's one or two people who pop their head above the parapet and try and be a bit more a bit more brighter. But, you know, yeah, the betting ring's not the vibrant place it was when we were about. I was saying all reminiscent here. It's all like yesterday's, isn't it? But, like, 25, 30 years ago, as you say, when we were... Say in our prime or in our pomp, if we ever were in our pomp, either of us, but yeah, it's, it's not quite the same as it was. So, do I miss it completely day to day? Maybe not. I enjoy the big meetings now, I love going to Cheltenham and Royal Ascot and the places like that. But I think, yeah, if you told me that I could have to go to uh, you know, hunting in this afternoon or to Plumpton on Monday, I'd be a bit like I'd pull a union face, probably. <laughs> now, we're talking about today, 
we're at Star Sports, even though they go to big meetings predominantly online, you're sat here in front of your quadruple screen, screens. So if you've embraced the online betting, the exchanges and all that stuff, can it still be as much fun? You know, can you get into that like you used to get into jumping off the stool and hedging and uh, trying to beat the punters? Yeah, sort of I mean, look, you can certainly see, look, I mean, I'm the first to admit, I like following money, I like following people. A lot of sharp people bet, you know, with Star. And we see a lot of sharp money, especially the horse season out, you know, in the mornings or overnight or whatever. So I certainly enjoy following the money and trying to be ahead of the market. Doesn't do accounts much good. I'll be the first to admit that. But yeah, look, I mean, it's, it's a different side of the story now. It's, you know, something I've, I've got into and I've really embraced and I enjoy the, the trading side. But that's always been my background as well, really working. You know, it's the same. It's probably a smooth transition. If you've worked on a race course, you understand the figures, you understand, you know, percentages, you understand money and how money talks and how money moves certain things. And I just think, yeah, you can embrace that into a into a trading role, what I've got now. So, look, I've moved forward. I mean, it's still the old fashioned way of, you know, the, the book and computer. It's, it's a bit different now to, you get all these sort of 24 year olds at a university with all their algorithms and quants and whatever they want to deal with nowadays. And a lot of the time, I think that's what you're dealing with now with a lot of these firms. You know, they are run by accountants, aren't they? And, and by being counters, a lot of the, to we say, the sort of multinational bigger firms and, Maybe Star aren't quite that way in, in Klein. You know, they do like some, sometimes still play the punter as opposed to just playing the uh, the figures and playing the balance sheet at the end of the day. So five years time, where's Lofty going to be? Still being the union rep? Oh, I'll still be part of the union. So I'd have thought, yeah, they'll always be part of the union. They never, never, never get that out of me, will they? Um, oh, listen, I, I like. I think I'm still healthy and still here, breathing and alive and, and what have you. And um, yeah, look, I'd love to still be involved with the game, and I'm sure I will be in some way or another. It's it's been in my blood and. As you say, it comes through from my uncle and granddad for all the all the lifetime, and it's still there now, and it's always going to be part of me, you know. And it will course through my brain, my veins, and even my brains, and my veins. So I take my last breath, you know. I'm sure I'll still be a uh, still be a punter and a bookmaker and, and be in the betting industry at heart. Yeah. Brilliant. Well, on that note, Martin Lofty Chapman, thank you very much. Pleasure, sir. Thank you.